Yeah, I, think, I don't think it's unexpected. I mean, to be fair, I've coached overseas, and I know that it's a completely different game up in the north here. Um, they're well coached. Uh, uh, Treviso had the same coaching staff. In fact, I think a couple of their coaches now have been appointed to coach Italy. Uh, a lot of those players have played for Italy in the last couple of months. Um, yeah, and I mean, when you give them a good start like they did um, and they get the crowd behind them, it's a very difficult place to, to play. But uh, yeah, take nothing away from Treviso. I thought they played really well. I thought they used the the wind in the first half really well and pinned us down in our half um, and they kicked really well so it was difficult for us to sort of get back into their field and every time we did we turned the ball over. Jake, uh, you and I are probably both old enough to remember when South Africa returned from isolation in 1992 thinking that South African rugby was in pretty good shape and New Zealand and Australia showed that we were uh, somewhat behind. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you feel that tonight maybe is a bit of a wake-up call for South African rugby? Obviously, COVID has resulted in a bit of a kind of like an isolation for a year or so. Yeah, Ken, I don't think it's, a, I mean, as I said, I think looking at 92 when we played Australia, New Zealand, you know, that was test level. Um, I think to be fair, I also got to, I mean, I've enjoyed the highs with this group of players. You know, I've done really well when the Curry Cup, won Super Rugby unlocked, have beaten some, some big teams in the last year. But, you know, one mustn't forget that you, it's not your right just to go anywhere and win. You know, there's, as I, I said earlier, there's experience. You know, those guys, they might not be household names in South Africa, but they play test rugby. You know, they play against England at Twickenham and they play against France, you know, in, in France. And, uh, when you get them at home, I mean, they can play. Um, and I think the thing we, we sort of knew, we knew that they would start well. And at eight all, I thought, you know, well, we've worked hard to sort of get back in the game. We've worked hard to maybe kill a little bit of the passion that the Italians were going to show in the beginning of the game. And then we made two or three mistakes quickly. And it led to 21 points. You know, you get a yellow card, high tackle, then they kick a cross kick. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the, the margins when you get up here, Ken, are so, are so you know, you get punished here. And, and uh, I'm a realist. I mean, a lot of these youngsters that I've got, uh, this is the first time that they've probably felt pressure like that. First time they've gone into a change room at 20 points to eight down. And it's a learning thing for them. I mean, I don't enjoy it. They don't enjoy it. But, you know, we've got to, we've got to find our feet somehow. And we got, uh, we got convincingly beaten by a really well-coached, you know, really good team. That's just to be fair and in perspective, I mean, uh, your team didn't play well. Um, no. this, um, uh, maybe Murphy's Law, one of those days that absolutely nothing would have uh, go your, your, your way. A um, lot of mistakes, you, you, you lost a uh, lot of uh, momentum with, with those mistakes. And yeah. uh, your, your line-out line was a disaster. Um, yeah. wasn't, it, wasn't it just, just uh, uh, not to make excuses, but wasn't it just a, a case of that... Uh, one of those days that everything uh, of the nothing uh, went your way. Yeah, of course, one hundred percent right. I mean, I can't. You can't single out any player. You can't single out any. Just thought there was no area of the game that we really put a stamp down. You know, whether it was defence or whether it was set piece or whether it was attack. You know, whether it was breakdown. You know, I just felt like we were a bit short of the pace in everything. Every time we had a line out, we lost it when we could have. You know, built a bit of pressure. Um, yeah, you know, again, it's, it's, you're right. I mean, I've, I'm a realist. I've enjoyed winning with this group. I've enjoyed um, having the group feel what it's like to win big games. And, and, you know, today we got it wrong. And take nothing away from Treviso. They played really well. They, um, they took their chances. They started well. They got field position. You know, and we, and we can't play catch-up rugby when you, when you come to any team in, in the north. I mean, that's, that's how it works. You know, you've got to, we got to, We've got, to, we've got to understand that. It's not local derbies and it's, it's a different level of rugby when you come up here. Jake, uh, you're talking about, about the mistakes. Um, uh, uh, why did that happen? Is it, was it the heat? Um, was it the travel? Was it preparation or just uh, lack of experience? Jeez, I swear, I'll be honest. I, I mean, if I could answer that, I would be able to. I, mean, I suppose a little bit of everything. You know, It's inexperience. It was the heat. It's a different venue. First time we played in front of a crowd. 
Um, yeah, but I mean, again, you can find anything. It's up to us to see what, what we can do differently. It's up to us to, to find a way that if we get into that situation again, we, we, we probably play a bit better. Um, but I don't want to downplay the fact that I thought Treviso played really well. I mean, I thought that, I said it earlier, you know, Kieran Crowley and Marius Quirsten and those guys are now moving up to the Italian national team having done really well with this group. Yeah, you know, sure they had they struggled in the beginning of the year, but you know, we were top of the pops and then you lose a game. So that's that's the margins and, and it's a learning curve for us. And I'm looking forward to getting back home and, and we get back on Friday night uh, onto the field and we've got to find a way in which we can play good rugby. Jake, speaking of uh, Kiran Crowley and his uh coaching team, is it a question of they outfoxed you in all uh, aspects of the game? Yeah, Simon, I mean, I, th yeah, I think sometimes you've got to be, as a coach, thought they caught us with one or two things and they, yeah, they, they, they played tactically really smart. You know, they uh, didn't allow us to get into the game. I think we hadn't touched the ball for the first 20 odd minutes and, uh, and again, it was difficult because we didn't really want to play too much rugby in the beginning. Um, we wanted to maybe keep them in their half and we struggled. So, yeah, Simon, I mean, credit to them, credit to them. I think uh, having looked at the game, you know, maybe if we had caught that kickoff after it was eight all and we got out of our half, who knows, you know, maybe, maybe we would have been able to build some more pressure because at that point, eight all, it looked like we were getting back into the game and then we almost, for about 15 minutes, just let it slip away again. Jake, uh, sorry, just, just on, on, on that, I mean, I suppose in a way, I mean, I know it's very disappointing at the moment, but... In a way, it could be a blessing in disguise that in, you know, this, while this is the Rainbow Cup, when you get into the United Rugby Championship, yes. um, you have been warned now, in a way. And, and so, so has every South African team been warned about what to expect? Well, Brendan, spot on. I mean, that's exactly it. I think it was a bit arrogant of South Africans to think you just arrive in Italy and you beat this Italian club side and you get on the plane and you go home. You know, it's not, this, is a different, this is a different tournament altogether. You know, we've been... We've been playing each other. We know everybody backwards. You know, we know every coach backwards. We know every, you know, almost we know every tactic backwards because that's all we've seen for about a year now. You know, to come here and then get into the unknown um, makes you so much better. You know, I'm I'm glad we we had the opportunity to come across. I'm glad that we played in a final. You know, obviously, I'm very glad that we've had an opportunity to grow as a team. I'm, I'm very disappointed we didn't get over the line, but. As you say, Brendan, um, I've coached overseas and I think some of these young boys have seen that it's, it's a completely different game when you come up here, you know. Jake, um, taking into account there was obviously lessons learned tonight, um, what advice would you give yourself and the other South African coaches for the tournament that starts in September? Yeah, Carl, I suppose the advice I would give is that don't come thinking that it's the same as what you're used to. There are a lot of things that are different. Um, logistically, it's different, you know. And, and you always question whether or not, you know, should you have come later, should you have, you know, but th those, aren't, those, aren't, those aren't the reasons you, you, you don't pitch up. You know? I think we, we look like an inexperienced team today. I think, I think Simon said it, you know. We didn't have one aspect of our game that really looked as though we... We were on top of them. And, and that's not like we've been the whole year. You know, since we've been, we've either scrummed well or we've defended well or we've attacked well or, you know, or we've done everything well in certain games. You know, we finished off well, whatever the, you know, we were clinical, we were in the 22. Today, we, we probably never got one area of that in, in place. But, you know, it's a, different, it's a different defensive system and it's a different uh, kind of forward pack you're playing against. And it's... Uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose it, it's, it's little things like that. And I think the lessons for all the coaches is that it's easy probably to do analysis every week of, of our domestic rugby. It's much more tough to, to try and do homework and analysis on teams that you don't know, players that you don't know. You know? I mean, you almost know back home who they're going to pick and you know what sort of team they're going to pick. Yeah, you wait until Friday and it can be completely different to what you expected. But... You know, that, well, that wasn't the case. I'm, I'm not saying that's what we got caught in, but I mean, that is, that is the uniqueness of playing in a country and in a competition where you don't know everybody. Jake, having spoken about all, all the unknowns, though, there, I mean, there are some pretty basic things, though, that uh, Benetton obviously got off to a flying start, but 
like not kicking out into touch um, yeah. just to slow them down a bit and yeah. a lot of tapped balls in the line out you know really creating unnecessary pressure for you guys yeah but ken the interesting thing is we haven't done that the whole year you know we've been accurate in all those facets we've we've been clinical in all those things we haven't lost the line out on our trial line you know in any competition since we've been together you know we I suppose when you kick the ball and it doesn't go out against teams in South Africa, we probably haven't been as, as punished as we were tonight by, by their back three. I mean, their man of the match was their fullback. So, again, you know, it's a hell of a hard for the fullback to be man of the match unless you kick the ball straight on his throat, which is what we tended to do. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's no one's fault. I mean, I don't think it's a resource thing. I think it's a, it's an, uh, yeah, I suppose it's a, it's a lesson for everybody in that group to make sure that by the time we get off the plane in Pretoria, we've got to make sure we, we've moved on. Jake Percival, Jan here. Um, Goedenavond. Jake, I want to ask you, I listened to you on social media, many of you understand that you that the speelfeld was not necessary to be like because you had all of you, you see more players lost, but it was probably a whole year, or for two seasons, with you played. But the reality is that you don't have to play um, the whole run, the springbok, for what you did. Later van jaar ook het jy het ons dit ingelig. Hoe berei jy hier die huidige groep spelers voor vir hy groot competitie later van jaar? Well, Percival, ek dink die antwoord is, is die selle. Precies wat van aan gebeur het, hulle moet deel van die druk wees. Hulle moet deel wees van hierdie type games. Um, ja, ek dink ons ondersteuner sal graag, graag gehad het dat uh, Dwayne en Marco en Mornay en Trevor en hy manne sal gespeel het, maar... Ik weet, ek het voor die game gesê vir die spelers, jy weet, as Leinster hier gekom het en gespeel het, of die Crusaders het hier gekom en gespeel het, jy weet, met hulle diepte en hulle, hulle structuur en plek, het, sal hulle self back om hierdie games te win. En jy weet, op die einde van die dag, is deel van my werk as director van rugby by die bille, is nie net om een groep spelers te heen, nie, is om een groep spelers te heen wat, jy weet, kan toer en, jy weet, kan by die huis bly, soos het nou is, hulle het vandag gespeel tegen WP, Um, en zodra ons die diepte in ons squad het, gaan het baie beter vir ons wees en, en ons leer net uit die proces, jy weet, die jong mannekies wat redelijk goed gedoen in die laatste jaar het nou gesien, is een ander, ander type game as jy die noorde speel Jack, with, with that um, uh, heading back home and it's curry cup, you've got a potential banana skin now in the Pumas waiting for you, maybe the Lions um, and, and looking strong. In terms of uh, resources, uh, anything else other than the squad you have there with you? Yeah, it's fuck. You know, I mean, it, as, you, as I said to you at the beginning of the week, it doesn't get any easier, you know. People uh, want to beat us. And you saw the reaction of Treviso. I mean, they're obviously delighted to beat a side like the Bulls. And that's obviously, you know, then you know you're doing something right because if they, if, they, if they put it on their pedestal about beating a team like the Bulls, and I'm sure next week it'll be no different. You know, we play the Pumas, they've, they've beaten the big union like the Lions. I'm expecting, you know, when we play the Pumas, it's always tough. A lot of those boys live in Pretoria. Um, but it's a long tournament, uh, Ashwak. There's, a, you know, home and away. I mean, I think today I didn't see the game, but I think our team we left behind got a bonus point against Western Province. I mean, there's scored four tries against uh, against the province side so you know we got one point on the log we just got to make sure when we get back we we find a way in which we can get into the playoffs for the curry cup final question the in the the global in the 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 Ons het een goed gedoen om hier uit te kom. Um, ons het vijf van ons zes games thuis gewen. Je weet, uh, vijf van die zeven games in die hele toernooi gewen. Je weet, die, ek denk die teleurstelling, ons verloor die laatste game. So, uh, so altijd die laatste game wen in die finaal, maar soos ek sê, je weet, is, uh, ons moet ook bykie wees, het is lekker om te wen, ons moet ook bykie uh, humility wees as ons verloor ook. Jake, um, I met uh, uit van Jacques Duplessis in Johan Goosen, wanneer vallen hulle in by hulle? <laughs> uh, Kobus, uh, so gauw is moeilijk, ek dink. Jy weet, ek sal moet kyk en sien. Ek dink hulle contracte is klaar einde van hierdie maand en hulle kan die eerste juli begin. So, ja, ek dink, jy weet, onthou, hulle het ook bykie tyd af nodig. Jy weet, hulle het lang seisoene gespeel. Ek dink hulle het drie, drie seisoene in een rij gespeel met COVID. So, Ja, ons moet nou, jy weet, soos ek weer sê, dit is een lang toernooi, Karibeker is thuis en weg, jy weet, het eindig, einde van die jaar, so, 
Jy weet, ons krijgen nou tenminste kans om, om, jy weet, ander oukies te probeer, en hoopelik, as hulle deel van die span is, sê begin van juli, jy weet, kan, kan ons tenminste ons span bykie sterker maak. 